Hi everybody, my name is Samer Audi. This is video number 8 in the Kali Linux Security Tools series. In this demo, we only have one tool and all you need to know is what SMTP stands for. But don't worry about it, I'm gonna tell you anyway. If you remember in the Networking Fundamentals video, I discussed email protocols. SMTP or the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol was one of those. The SMTP server uh, typically listening on port 25 is responsible for sending messages. What it does is pushes the received messages to other servers that would have the responsibility to deliver the message, like a POP3 or an IMAP server. As part of our reconnaissance phase, we are collecting information about our target and therefore, we want to find out what the SMTP server has, what is it capable of, what commands are allowed, what extensions are present, and so on. Okay, so let's see what we can discover together. Since we only have one tool, I want to establish some sort of a workflow. We will not randomly start enumerating SMTP servers, right? So basically, there is a process where we discovered that SMTP is there and then we started our analysis. So as always, I have my two targets, Metasploitable and a Windows VM. So I will start with a quick host discovery using Nmap. I will scan this network with the SN option, which basically tells Nmap to skip a port scanning. And as you can see here, I have my two targets. The next step is basically to take each one of them and dive deeper to discover what ports are open, what services are running and so on. So I will choose 130 and I will run Nmap again to enumerate running services. Using the SV option will get you the service and the version of these running services. As you can see, I discovered that port 25 is open and an SMTP service is running on this port. So what next is to go to our tool for today, which is SWAX, and try to discover additional information. But before I do that, I wanna show you that I can enumerate SMTP data using Nmap. So let's do just that. So in this command, I'm using the SC option, which is the default scripting engine in Nmap, and I'm only focusing on port 25 to save time. As you can see here, Nmap got me the SMTP commands and extensions that are available on this server, also some SSL information, but I'm gonna talk about these extensions and commands in our tool, so let's start. I just use the S option for the server, which is the IP address of my target, but right away Swax is asking me for a parameter, which is who are you sending this message to? So I'm gonna just use my name as a user. Okay, so let us examine the output that we got. As you can see here, Swax tried to establish a connection with the target on port 25, and it got a connection. Then I got a conversation back and forth. The left arrow is something that I received from my target, from the SMTP server. The right arrow here is from Kali, from Swax to the server. So you can see here, I got back and forth. It's a conversation. So let's take a look at some of the things that we see here. First of all, I wanna talk about the codes. So you can see, for example, code 220, you can see 250, you can see 221. What are these? In SMTP, these codes, they 
tell you something they tell you whether things are okay whether ready whether it is not okay so 220 for example the service is ready 221 is closing the service is closing so you can see it at the end 250 whatever a command or mail action is okay is completed okay we also see some commands and extensions here so just to give you a context here there is smtp and there is extended smtp with smtp we have the hello command but it's actually written h-e-l-o and for the extended we have E hello written as you can see here in front of you e h l o basically this is an in initiation of the smtp session conversation the extended hello is an alternative to hello when we have the esmtp basically if the server supports the extensions then it will tell us what extensions it supports and this is what we see in the next few lines so we can see for example pipelining we can see the size basically this is the maximum size allowed or the server is expecting from the client we can see things like the verify message or extension and this basically verifies whether a, a user exists on the local host and it would if if it does exist and we use this extension or this command we would get back additional information about that user this one for example is a command used to start a tls handshake and what else we have the etrn command it's basically the request to start an SMTP a queue processing of a specified server host and so on and so forth it's it's not really very important at this point let's continue with here what's happening here in these messages so I said or Kelly said there's a message mail so the mail command from root at Kali. the SMTP server said okay yeah no problem and the recipient is user Samer, but this is where I have a problem. This is where I have a 550 code, and basically it's rejected because there isn't a user Samer. So Swax said, okay, I'm ready to quit, and SMTP server said, goodbye. So as you can see, it's a conversation back and forth. Remember, this is a client-server communication model, and it's these messages going back and forth between the client here being swax and the server on my metasploitable so what's the problem here the problem is i don't have a user now remember in the beginning i said i wanted to create a workflow i wanted to create a connection between the different tools in the previous demo i used a tool called enum for linux where among other things it enumerated users on the target using the server message block or SMB. Metasploitable has a Samba server and I was able to enumerate users using SMB. So can we do that right now? Absolutely, let's do that. I'm not gonna use the A option for all, I'm gonna use the U option, which is uppercase U, otherwise it will be the username and I will use it to, I have an error as I can see here, let me fix it, to enumerate users on my target. And it's done. I have many users that I can use now in my conversation. So these are some of the users here. If you remember last time I highlighted MSF admin, I can use mail, news, root, all of them, they should work now because they are valid users on my target. So let's repeat now uh, the SWAX command, but this time telling it a valid user. 
Okay, now if I hit enter like last time, it will ask me, well, who is it to? But instead, I'm going to use the T option to tell it, well, it's root. So let's try root. And as you can see now, the conversation is a little bigger because after here, all the exchange of establishment of the session, I actually have a valid user. So basically here, the recipient using RCPT is root. And this time I got a 250 OK from the server. So I said, well, OK, what about the data? The server said, well, I am ready for to receive data. And this is the message now. So I'm sending date to from subject. And as you can see now, this is the body. This is the default body. And I can change it if I want using the B option. And I will do that in the next example. So I'm done and I am ready to quit as I did before. So let's try again using the B option and using also another user, MSF admin. I can do, uh, for example, I can change from also. So I'm going to say from Samer using the F option and B. Okay, so the same thing. Now the mail is from Samer and this is my data and this is the body as I changed it. As you can see, this is a very useful tool. It's specific to SMTP and among other things, when you learn the commands and when you actually have a proper email server environment running, you can test if it support for example, uh, TLS, you can test if it has a spam filter, you can try to put an attachment and Swox allows you to do all of that. But, uh, you know, within the context of this demo, I will not be going that deep. This is it for this demo. I hope that you found it beneficial. If you're using the tool, let me know how you're doing. So thank you for watching.